What if I told you today that I could teach you the secret of living your best life? Would you be interested? Of course you would. We all want to live our best life. Well, this secret was taught to me through the school of hard knocks. One day I came home from work, friends, and I was having a really long day. And so I decided to get on Facebook and to try to relax. Well, that right there was mistake number one. As I was on Facebook, I started to notice some of the things that some of my friends were doing, like taking awesome vacations that was not in my budget, buying new cars that definitely was not in my budget, and let me not get on their perfect family life when my family wasn't perfect and is not perfect. And I began to feel a little bit of discontentment come up. And then I saw a post from one of my friends who was asking for recommendations of a speaker for a conference that she was hosting. This was a local conference and there were many women speakers in our area that I served alongside with for many years. And I saw a lot of their names on the list. But as I was reading down the list, I noticed that my name did not make the list. And at that time, I just felt an overwhelming sense of discontentment and sadness. And then I remembered a verse that Paul shared in Philippians, Philippians 4.12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. I wanted to learn that secret. I wanted to learn that contentment is the secret of living your best life. And so that day I made a commitment to the Lord and to myself to begin to cultivate contentment in my life. A couple of practices that I began to make into my daily routines and into my life were number one, I had to stop comparing myself to other people. Theodore Roosevelt says that comparison is the thief of joy. Well, I say comparison is not only the thief of joy, but the thief of contentment and the thief of living your best life. And so I began to not compare myself to people that I saw on social media, but to begin to sincerely compliment people, compliment their vacations, compliment their, their new outfit, compliment their family picture, and as I sincerely complimented people, I began to feel a little bit more content with my own life. Because this is the thing, friends, habitual, unfavorable social comparison causes a person to express greater stress, anxiety, and depression, and make self-defeating choices. This is a study from Preston and how to stop comparing yourself to others we have to stop comparing ourselves to others if we want to live our best life. And we have to instead cultivate contentment. Another thing that I added to my daily practice is cultivating gratefulness, learning to be grateful, learning to be thankful. And as I began to be thankful, to keep a gratitude journal and to list the things that I was grateful for, I began to notice that I was more content with my life. As a matter of fact, one of the things that helped me cultivate contentment and gratitude was going over my mother-in-law's house for coffee one day. I looked up and I noticed that she had a picture in her kitchen that looked like this. And it said, what if you woke up today with only the things you thanked God for yesterday? Ooh, this little picture brought me such conviction because I want to be a thankful person. To live my best life, I have to be content with the gifts that God has given me today. My husband, my children, my puppy, my home, the ministry that God has given me. Today, I need to thank God 
for those things and to be grateful. When I do that, then I learn contentment and contentment is the secret of living your best life. The third practice that I began to cultivate in order to grow in contentment is to learn to be fully present. See, sometimes we miss the blessings in our life because we're too busy thinking about the things that we want to accomplish in the future. And so we miss the opportunities today, the opportunity to take time and to be with your children, the opportunity to take time and to talk to a neighbor, the opportunity to take time to be kind to the cashier, to the person working at Walmart or Target, the opportunity to send a text to a hurting friend, the opportunity to take time to have coffee with your mother or father or good friend, the opportunity to slow down and smell the roses, if you will. Being fully present helps you cultivate contentment and contentment truly is the secret of living your best life. I want to encourage you to cultivate contentment. I was practicing this with my family and watching one of our favorite cartoons called Kung Fu Panda. And there was just a small clip that really demonstrated this point that I want to show to you today. So if you could draw your attention to the screen to watch this. Oh friends, isn't it good to see that Master Ugwe can really teach not just our children, but us as adults contentment. When he said that yesterday is history, that tomorrow is a mystery, and that today is a gift, and that is why it is called the present. I was convicted. I want to make every day a gift because God gave me today as a gift. And so to do that, I have to cultivate contentment. And to do that, you have to cultivate contentment. And as we together cultivate contentment as a culture, as a society, friends, I believe that we will become a happier, more blessed people. So in conclusion, if you want to live a fulfilled life, then we must cultivate contentment. It is truly the secret of living your best life. God still has a plan and future for you. And part of that plan is cultivating contentment. Thank you so much.